Hello, I'm David, and I'm here to read to you the Wikipedia article on optical fiber. Uh, I, I'm doing a degree in computing right now, so this, is, this subject really interests me. And optical fiber is cool because it means you can get faster broadband speeds at home than ever before. So, away we go. An optical fiber is a flexible, transparent fiber made of extruded glass or plastic, slightly thicker than a human hair. It can function as a waveguide or light pipe to transmit light between the two ends of the fiber. The field of applied science and engineering concerned with the design and application of optical fibers is known as fiber optics. Optical fibers are widely used in fiber optic communications, where they permit transmission over long distances and at higher bandwidths, data rates, than wire cables. Fibers are used instead of metal wires because signals travel along them with less loss and are also immune to electromagnetic interference. Fibers are also used for illumination and are wrapped in bundles so that they may be used to carry images, first allowing viewing in confined spaces. Specially designed fibers are used for a variety of other applications, including sensors and fiber lasers. Optical fibers typically include a transparent core surrounded by a transparent cladding material with a lower index of reflection. Light is kept in the core by total internal reflection. This causes the fiber to act as a waveguide. Fibers that support many propagation paths or transverse modes are called multimode fibers, MMF while those that only support a single mode are called single mode fibers, SMF. Multi-mode fibers generally have a wider core diameter and are used for short distance communication links and for applications where high power must be transmitted. Single mode fibers are used for most communication links longer than 1,000 meters, that's 3,300 3, feet. Joining lengths of optical fiber is more complex than joining electrical wire or cable. The ends of the fibers must be carefully cleaved and then carefully spliced together with the cores perfectly aligned. A mechanical splice holds the ends of the fibers together mechanically, while fusion splicing uses heat to fuse the ends of the fibers together. Special optical fiber connectors for temporary or semi-permanent connections are also available. And the next section is history. Guiding of light by reflection, by, sorry, guiding of light by refraction, different thing, the principle that makes fiber optics possible was first demonstrated by Daniel Collendon and Jacques uh, Babinet in Paris in the early 1840s. John Tyndall included a demonstration of it in his public lectures in London, 12 years later. Tyndall also wrote about the property of total internal reflection in an introductory book about the nature of light in 1870. He wrote, when the light passes from air into water, the refracted ray is bent towards the perpendicular. When the ray passes from water to air, it is bent from the perpendicular. If the angle which the ray in water encloses with the perpendicular to the surface be greater than 48 degrees, the ray will not quit the water at all. It will be totally reflected at the surface. The angle which marks the limit where total reflection begins is called the limiting angle of the medium. For water, this angle is 48 uh, degrees 27. For flint glass, it is 38 degrees 41 seconds. I think that's how you say it. For the diamond, it is uh, 23 degrees 42. Practical applications, such as close internal illumination during dentistry, appeared early in the 20th century. Image transmission through tubes was demonstrated independently by the radio experimenter Clarence Hansel and the television pioneer John Logie Baird in the 1920s. The principle was first used for internal medical examinations by Heinrich Lamm in the following decade. 
Modern optical fibres, where the glass fibre is coated with a transparent cladding to offer a more suitable refractive index, appeared later in the decade. Development then focused on fibre bundles for image transmission. Harold Hopkins and Narinda Singh Kapani at Imperial College in London achieved low-loss light transmission through a 75 centimetre long bundle which combines several thousand fibres. Their article, titled A Flexible Fibroscope Using Static Scanning, was published in the journal Nature in 1954. The first fibre optic semi-flexible gastroscope was patented by Basil Herschersritz, C. Wilbur Peters and Lawrence E. Curtis, researchers at the University of Michigan in 1956. The process of developing the gastroscope Curtis produced the first glass-clad fibres and previous optical fibres had relied on air or impractical ores and waxes as the low-index cladding material. A variety of other image transmission applications then followed. In 1880, Alexander Graham Bell and Sumner Tainter invented the photophone at the Volta Laboratory in Washington DC to transmit voice signals over an optical beam. It was an advanced form of telecommunications, but subject to atmospheric interferences and impractical until the secure transport of light that would be offered by fiber optical systems. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, light was guided through bent glass rods to illuminate body cavities. Junichi Nishizawa, a Japanese scientist at Tohoku University, also proposed the use of optical fibres for communications in 1963, as stated in his book published in 2004 in India. Nishizawa invented other technologies that contributed to the development of optical fibre communications, such as the graded index optical fibre as a channel for transmitting light from semiconductor lasers. The first working fibre optical data transmission system was demonstrated by German physicist Manfred Borner at Telefunken Research Labs in Ulm in 1965, which was followed by the first patent application for this technology in 1966. Charles K. Cowell and George A. Hockham of the British company Standard Telephones and Cables, STC, were the first to promote the idea that the attenuation in optical fibres could be reduced below 20 decibels per kilometre, dB per kilometre. Making fibres a practical communication medium, they proposed that the attenuation in fibres available at the time was caused by impurities that could be removed, rather than by fundamental physical effects such as scattering. They correctly and systematically theorised that light loss properties for optical fibre and pointed out the right material to use for such fibre, silica glass with high purity. This discovery earned Cal the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2009. NASA used fiber optics in the television cameras that were sent to the moon. At the time, the use in the cameras was classified confidential, and only those with sufficient security clearance or those accompanied by someone with the right security clearance were permitted to handle the cameras. The crucial attenuation limit of 20 decibels per kilometer was first achieved in 1970 by researchers Robert D. Maurer, Donald Keck, Peter C. Schultz, and Frank Zimmer working for the American glass maker Corning Glassworks, now Corning Incorporated. They demonstrated a fibre with 17 decibels per kilometre attenuation by doping silica glass with titanium. A few years later, they produced a fibre with only 4 decibel per kilometre attenuation using a germanium dioxide as the core uh, dopant. Such low attenuation ushered in the era of optical fibre telecommunication. In 1981, General Electric produced fused quartz ingots that could be drawn into strands 20 miles, sorry, 25 miles long. Attenuation in modern optical cables is far less than in electrical copper cables, leading to long-haul fibre connections with repeated distances of 70 to 150 kilometres. The erbium-doped fibre amplifier, which reduced the cost of long-distance fibre systems by reducing or eliminating optical electrical optical repeaters, was co-developed by teams led by David N. Payne of the University of Southampton and Emmanuel de Severa at Bell Labs in 1986. Robust modern optical fibre uses glass for both core and sheath and is therefore less prone to ageing. 
It was invented by Gerhard Brandsy of Scott Glass in Germany in 1973. The emerging field of photonic crystals led to the develop development in 1991 of photonic crystal fiber, which guides light by diffraction from a periodic structure rather than by total internal reflection. The, the first photonic crystal fibers became commercially available in 2000. Photonic crystal fibers can carry higher power than conventional fibers and their wavelength dependent properties can be manipulated to improve performance. Uses. Do I carry on? <laughs> you probably want to move on to someone else now, don't you? Okay, well that was great fun. Um, I hope this is useful to someone at some point. In any case, it's helped you to test the camera. <laughs> and the sound. <laughs>